In parts 1 and 2, I've talked about functional currency and QBU as if you know what they mean. Now we'll discuss them more. Functional currency is both a book and tax concept. This is one of the few areas where U.S. tax rules refer to U.S. GAAP. Tax regulations say a functional currency used for books should be followed for tax unless it's clearly erroneous. Functional currency is determined at the level of a qualified business unit. It is the currency in which the largest part of the QBU's business is conducted. The Financial Accounting Standards Board has listed these factors as the key ones to consider in determining whether the functional currency should be a foreign currency or the currency of the owner of the QBU. It's a long list and no factor predominates. Fortunately for us mortals and most QBUs, the functional currency is pretty obvious because most QBUs do most of their business in just one currency. In addition to a functional currency for the QBU, each entity that is not disregarded must have its own functional currency. This applies particularly for a foreign corporation. We must determine the functional currency of each QBU and also determine it separately for the entity. The whole QBU profit or loss is determined in its functional currency. If the QBU has a different functional currency than the entity, that profit or loss is translated to the entity's functional currency at the average rate for the year. Together, this is called the P&L method. For example, if we have a German subsidiary that has its own business, it likely will have the euro as its functional currency. If it has a branch in Paris, that branch likely also uses the euro, so no translation is required. If it has a branch in London, though, that branch likely uses the UK pound. If so, the London branch records its transactions in pounds, then the results for the year are translated from those pounds to euros at the average rate for the year. Translation can be a multi-step process. If our London branch incurs a transaction in rubles, it translates the rubles to pounds and records the pound amounts in its local books. After year end, the net P&L in pounds is translated to euros at the average rate for the year. The branch balance sheet is translated at the year end rate and the branch gets consolidated with the German company. Then, for U.S. tax and financial reporting, the P&L and balance sheet of the German company are translated to dollars using average and year-end rates. The dollar must be used as a QBU's functional currency if the QBU's activity is mostly in dollars. The dollar is also required for U.S. individuals with no QBU. Dollars must be the functional currency for a QBU in the U.S. or for U.S. trade or business. The dollar must also be used as the functional currency for a QBU or entity whose primary currency is hyperinflationary. A similar requirement to use the top parent's reporting currency applies for books. Hyperinflationary means that the change in exchange rates over the preceding three years, or 36 months for books, exceeds 100%. The rules require changing the functional currency to dollars, or the reporting currency, if the currency becomes hyperinflationary. In all other cases, Changing functional currency requires IRS approval and 
can result in audit opinion qualifications. Another tax rule on functional currency says that the functional currency must be the U.S. dollar if the books of a QBU or entity are kept in a currency that otherwise would not be its functional currency. Let's revisit our German subsidiary with the London branch. If the Germans kept the London branch books in euros, then for U.S. tax purposes, the branch would be required to have a dollar functional currency, even if it had no transactions in dollars. I've seen exactly this situation before, and the results can be interesting for U.S. tax and gap. So let's talk a bit more about What's a QBU? Usually the answer to this is obvious. A QBU must be a separate, clearly identified business unit that keeps separate books. It's really that simple. A separate, clearly identified business unit that keeps separate books. That's all. This usually means a branch or office in a different country. But wait a minute, you say. There's no such thing as a branch for U.S. tax rules. That's correct for everything except the currency rules. Here, having a branch matters. Otherwise, a branch is just another pocket in the same pair of pants. It's disregarded, just as I explain in this video. For currency translation, though, Branch matters. Branch or QBU results get recorded in the QBU's functional currency, then translated to the branch owner's functional currency. In part four, we'll talk about transactions that are recorded at one exchange rate and settled later at a different rate. These are covered by section 988 and thus called 988 transactions. In part 5, we'll discuss forwards and futures and character and source of income on 988 transactions.